What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another DE Hammer video. I hope you all had great holidays. I know I did. I spent my time working in Python, making a script that converts uh, JPEGs and PNGs into halftone SVG files like this one here that I did of me and my wife. And I wanted to share it with you all. This is just the first version, but we're going to go over what version of Python, the libraries, and how to use uh, the script I wrote so you can make your own. Looking forward to 2022. Got a lot of videos and ideas to work on. And so make sure you're subscribed to catch up with all those. I will drop a hint. One of them has to do with a plasma cutter. Fun. So let's get into this video. First things first. I am not a professional programmer. <gasps> I am a hobbyist programmer. So is this the most Pythonic thing ever written? No. Does it work? Yes. All right. Second thing. I don't know if this works on a Mac. So if you're on a Mac and it works for you, let us know down below. And if you're on a Mac and it doesn't work, let us know down below. All right. Let's jump into this. We're going to be using Python 3.6.8. That's the version it works on. I have not tried it on any other version, but you can get that version from python.org. And I'll leave a link to this down in the description below. And you'll want to sc scroll down to the file section. And I like to use the executable installer. So you'll want to click there and download. Once you download that, you should have this. And when you run it, you know, right click, run as administrator. And since I already have this installed, it won't give me the option to show you the one thing you need to make sure you do when you're installing this. And that is this. Let's zoom in a little bit here. This add Python to 3.6 to path needs to be pressed for this to work. So please make sure that is checked when you're installing. Once you get that installed, we'll need to go over to the, my Thingverse page and get the zip file, this Python halftone zip here and download it. Save it to your desktop and then extract all. It will give you this folder here and we can go ahead and open that. Now, this does need to be on your desktop to work. You can change it to be someplace else, uh, but you'll need to jump into the Python code and change it in there if you want to run this from a different location. But I have it all running from the desktop for ease of use. Also, you'll need all these folders named as they are. And you'll see we have an image folder, a JSON folder, Python, save folder, and an SVG folder. This is where it'll save our final SVG file that we make. In the image folder, there are two images right here, import image and SVG image that need to be there for the script to work as well. And in the JSON file, it's blank right now, but once we start making stuff, some files will get saved in there. Do they do anything right now? No. In the future? Yes. So that's just an FYI. And the save folder, that's where we're going to save our grayscale and rescaling of our image too. Let's go ahead and jump into the Python folder. You'll notice there are three scripts here. You have the halftone GUI, and that's what we'll use to actually convert our image. You'll have the install libraries and the make folders. The make folders is not really important if you uh, got the zip file and saved it to your desktop. But if you didn't, uh, you'll need to run that, make all the folders, and then put your uh, script and those two images in the image folder. But you will need to run the install library. So let's take a quick look there. And what this is going to do is going to make sure you have pip installed, PyCario, svglib, and pillow. All the other libraries used in this program are already installed with Python. So you can either hit F5 from here, or you can just 
double click on install libraries and you'll see it just loaded all those real quick. I already got them, so it's not actually having to install anything. Let's just take a quick look at the script for the GUI here. We got Tinker Pill or Pillow, Pathlib, OS, JSON, Cario, SVG Lib, Report Lab, Graphics, Render, PM. Now this one right here, we will probably change in the future. I have noticed sometimes when generating a preview, there's some artifacts and the file gets a little corrupted here and there, but it doesn't do anything to the SVG file, just the PNG preview file. So that may change in later uh, editions. So if we're in here, we can head F5 to run, or if you just want to run it, you can double click here but we'll hit F5 to pull it up and it'll pull up the Python shell there. I still do have some uh, readouts over here, come up uh, some print functions to kind of give you a little bit of extra info. Eventually I'm gonna have it all come in here, but this is the GUI for the Halftone software or the script. And as you can see, all measurements are in millimeters. Yes, the next version, I will have it where you can choose inches or millimeters, but right now everything's in millimeters. And here we're gonna have our stock width and stock height. So that's gonna be the size of the stock you're using. In my case, I'm using a 300 by 300 millimeter piece of uh, plywood. In the border to add, I want to put a five millimeter border around the image. So I want it to come in five millimeters per one side. So it's actually going to take off 10 total from the top and bottom and left and right. And it'll scale it all proportionately. The detail field. Now this is where you'll decide how detailed do you want your final image? Uh, I have one through 20. That's just a guideline. You can go bigger, um, but it needs to be a whole number. For right now, for demonstration purposes, we're going to put 10. Now the spacing field, this is where we say how much space between the circle and the imaginary box it's sitting in when it's drawing all this, how much space from the circle to the edge of that box. You go point one, you're cutting it really close with your circles, especially if you have a lot of uh, dark colors. Point nine, you're gonna get very, very small circles. So when playing around this, I've used anywhere between point two and point four. It's really gonna depend on your preferences. For this, we'll split the difference and go point three. And right here, we have white circles with black background or black circles with black background. Right now, uh, that just changes what this uh, SVG uh, image is gonna look like. Um, in future editions, this will be different. Right now, if it's a white color, it's gonna get a bigger circle. If it's black, it'll be smaller. This button will change and reverse that in uh, later editions. Right now, it just controls the image preview in the SVG image spot. And then you can see convert image in open SVG folder. But first we need an image. So let's go right here to import image. And then we'll go find an image. Now, as you can see here, I have my original image right here. And then I have a edited version of that image. I took out the background, I put a black background. And I also scaled it to be square, not rectangle. Now we could import the rect uh, rectangle version. That'll be fine, you can do that. Uh, I just wanted to get the most bang out of my buck for spacing on this project. So I edited it this way. So we'll go ahead and import CP-01. And there it is. And now that we have this all filled out, we'll we'll just hit convert image. And this is where it can take some time, especially the lower this detail is, the longer it's going to take. And as you can also see in the shell here, it's going through all the different things it's going through in the script. Like I mentioned earlier, 
you can see that line there and that line there. The SVG file is fine, but that PNG does have a little bit of corruption and that's what I'm working on to change and get that fixed. But overall, not too shabby there. Really do like the results. And then if we were ready to cut that out, we just can click the open SVG folder and there we go. It even shows us that the width is 288 by 288 uh, millimeters. It's a white and black and the detail is 10. So it saves a lot of your settings from here into the file name. And of course we don't want to open it with that. Let's open it with Chrome. And there we can see it in Chrome. You can see none of the lines that we see there are showing up here. Now, one of the other things uh, to get it to do that, and I'm gonna try to find a way to get rid of it, but let's pull in Illustrator. All right, we got Illustrator open. Let's go ahead and just drag and drop our image in here. Now, I had to put a black square behind it and fill it in for it to really show up and save correctly. So you you are going to want to get rid of that square before you do any cutting. And we can change it to black dots here just so we can see it. And see, it kind of gives us the inverse uh, effect when we change it to black. But that's, that's pretty much it. You can even come in here, import another image. Let's just say we put that one in, it'll change it, and then we can convert image, and it'll go through all the steps again. And you'll want to play around with these. Um, your detail and the spacing is really going to be dependent upon your stock width and height. And yes, uh, I will get this changed here and get everything um, lined up here. But again, this is version 0.1. I'm looking for all kinds of feedback from y'all. One of the other things I want to show you is uh, this can take a little bit of time when you're importing it here. You've got a ton of circles. See, it still has that square there. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. We'll come here, select all, and group it. And that's where it can take some time grouping all these little circles. So let's just wait for that. Okay, now we'll go over to toolpaths. Oh, first, let's get this centered on our stock material, toolpaths. Now we can just go to vCarve. And I am using a 20 degree, three millimeter V bit for this. Max depth on this, I believe is two millimeters. And Typically, those would be my settings, but because we're not cutting through, we're just cutting down into it. I have ran this on my long mill at 1,600 millimeters per second and 1,600 for both the plunge and the feed. And then RPM, I'm using my router, so I normally have that set to about two on the setting. And depth per pass, I want to keep this the same as my max depth. So two, we'll hit OK. And again, this can take a little bit of time to calculate. And whoa, 588 minutes. Again, we're in Carbide Create, so let's get our calculator up. 588 divided by 60 is 9.8 hours, but Let's multiply that by half because when we do get it into the software, it really is about half that time. So that's about 
five hours to do this. And again, we could cut that down just by coming here to the details and let's say 13. Let's reopen up this one here. So we're working with the same image and convert image. We'll wait for that. All right, let's come back here. Go to design and we'll get rid of that one. Got to love that waiting while it deletes all those circles. Import, come back and import the 13. Let's get rid of this square. Select group and wait while that thinks. Uh oh, there we go. And center and reselect so it calculates our toolpath. There we go. Let's look at simulation. But 468 minutes is a little bit faster than 588. But again, even at that size, um, you get a little bit of what it's trying to go on, but I would probably go back to the 10. The 13 doesn't really give you the depth that I would like for this. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my halftone imager. Just let me know uh, what y'all think. Is this something that y'all are interested in? Is there anything you would like to see different uh, or added to this? So... Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you family for putting up with me while I worked on this over vacation during the Thanksgiving and Christmas uh, holidays. And big shout out to all those of you who have subscribed. And remember, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe and bell button to see where this goes next and the different iterations as it progresses. So thank you for watching and remember, keep making stuff.